Okay, uh, good evening, guys. Am I audible to you? Yes, so you are audible. Okay, thanks for yes. that. Yes, sir. So, first of all, I would welcome you all to our platform Hicks and Bet, and I wish you all have a great learning experience today. And all of you are going to learn something new today. So, we'll be starting off with our session now. So as today we are going to learn that uh, how we can make a digital dictionary using Python. So uh, let's start with it and we'll see that uh, what all things are in that, like uh, how we can start up with this process. So let's start it. So guys, uh, what is GUI? First of all, uh, like as we are starting up with the GUI part, so what is GUI? Any idea to anyone? Anyone would uh, like to share their uh, views over it? What is GUI? The graphic user interface. Graphic user interface, right. So uh, why do we need a GUI or what are the advantages of using a GUI? Can anyone tell me uh, what are the advantages of using a GUI or why do we need a GUI? Okay, uh, can anyone give some examples of it? If not the advantages, can anyone give an advantage of it? Any uh, GUI that you might uh, like uh, use in your day to day life? Anyone would like to give example for that? Okay, so never mind, like uh, we'll start with it, that what is GUI and what are the advantages of it? Okay, I got some answer. So first thing that we are going to do is uh, introduction of GUI that what is uh, GUI and after that we will see that how we can design a GUI in Python using Kinta module, right? And with the flow in this, uh, like once we go through the introduction, we'll take five to 10 minutes in the initial, a bit of theoretical uh, introduction for it. And after that, whatever we will do will be a code based thing. So I will be giving, uh, like I'll be going through the code step by step. I'll not be writing it, but I'll be explaining you each and every step by uh, showcasing it that how that particular thing is actually working out there. Right. <clears throat> so let's start with it. Now, uh, GUI, as one of you said that it's a graphical user interface. So it's a form of user interface that allows the users to interact with the system through graphics. So when we are interacting a system through graphics, that is very much helpful for us, right? Uh, like for example, at the moment I'm using this uh, PowerPoint software, or let's say I'm using my mobile phone, computer system, anything. So how I am interacting with this system is basically I'm writing, uh, like I'm clicking over some icons. Like uh, if I come to the screen, <clears throat> so over this, you can see all these icons, buttons, sort of a things are available. When I click over it, something new happens, right? So these things are actually providing me a, a, like a sort of an interface through which I am interacting with this software, right? So GUI will help us to interact with the things. Now let's say what is the need of having a GUI? So uh, you guys might have noticed it, those who have uh, done some coding and all, they might have uh, noticed one thing that uh, all the things like uh, in Python, you can write down a code for creating a directory and all that sort of a thing. So let's assume uh, if we have some sort of a thing in which like, let's say people are writing down some sort of codes for creating a folder and all. So for a techie guy like us, those who are from engineering background, it's quite easy for us to execute it. But when we talk about a 
non technical guy they cannot write down the codes for simply just creating a file or copy pasting it so at that time gui comes to our rescue so python consists of lot of modules which can actually help us for creating a ui inter wx python pyqt j python v are some of the popular ones that are generally being used aside from this kiwi is also there <clears throat> right so these are some of the common modules that would be used in gui designing part so let's talk about kinter uh, what is kinter and uh, how you can start with it kinter is a interface that is used to create a gui toolkit shipped with python so it's an in internal module or you can say inbuilt module you are not supposed to download it externally it's uh, generally comes with a package and you can simply uh, import it and use it out so it's a standard gui library for python and it provides a fast and easy way to create gui applications so one can easily create the gui applications using it and uh, we can create these sort of uh, on the right hand side you can see we can create these sort of a things out there so we will see how we can use some of them we basically call these things as widgets right we basically call them as widgets so we will learn uh, like how we can create basic widgets not all like there are a lot of widgets available but we will see some of them which will be used in our project so the basic process for creating a ui using kinter is these four steps are there importing kinter module this is the first step creating main window for gui app so you need to create your main window this is a second step third step is adding widgets widgets are basically the elements that will be used for interaction like all these uh, things that you can see here these are all sort of a widgets which are uh, available in uh, powerpoint then enter the main event loop so these four steps are required for creating a gui in tkinter and out of these four steps first one is single line step second one is also single line unless and until we want to modify it or customize our gui screen and then <clears throat> this is the main step where we need to show our creativity in order to add on the widgets over our screen and then this is again one line of uh, that we are going to write down so whatever things we add on we write it within these two lines right so these are the four steps now let's move on to the widgets part as i said there are a lot of widgets available we can create a button button is like on clicking it like uh, whenever you see uh, login forms and all over that you have a login sort of a button or you may have show password like that when you click over this something happens so we will be learning how we can create a button and aside from that canvas canvas is used for creating uh, like avatars and all if you want to create some sort of a shape or a gaming uh, let's say avatar you want to make custom you can do it uh, using this then check button and all uh, entry frame these are different uh, like widgets available so i'll not be going into the detail of these at the moment like we will be using button and label for uh, this as well as uh, entry also so these three will be there label is basically used for writing down a normal text like over a gui screen if you want to make a normal text you can do it using label or you can also use it for adding on a image over your gui screen entry is generally used for taking the input from the user so the sort of a forms that you might see in which you are taking a, a entries from the user like name after that uh, you may have a blank space then uh, password and after that you may have a blank space so in this in which the user enters the detail is basically the entry so we'll use uh, these for um, our gui designing today so let's see quickly how we can uh, create a button the best part about kinter is that in this the widgets that we want to add on we just simply need to create a object of it by calling it with a similar name so this is the best part of using kinter out there so like if you want to create a widget button then all you need to do is you need to 
create an object of this button main window. So this main window is basically you need to write down the name of the main GUI screen here. You need to pass that GUI screen comma options. So options are used for customizing these buttons. Like what sort of a text will be written on it? What sort of a background of this button will be? What will be the color? What will be the color of this text? what will be the uh, roundness of this uh, buttons and all so for that sort of a thing we use it and also the height and width of this can be applied uh, from that right so these are some common uh, features or the options that are available which we can use in this the most important one is command the most important one is command <coughs> command is actually used for uh, redirecting it to some other task. Like when you will click on this button on clicking this button, what should happen next? It will be written in this command. So we will be linking some sort of a function with it, right? This was about button. After that we have entry. So I have already told you that it will be used for uh, getting information and there are some methods available with this, which we can be used like get set delete. These methods are there to uh, get the input from the user to set the value of this entry field and that sort of a thing can be used. Now, uh, one thing is there, which is known as a peak geometry, or you can also call them as layout manager. So what these things are basically like in Kinter, in order to show the widgets, we need to use any of these three methods in order to make them visible. So you can create a widget means I have created a widget, but in order to make it visible over my GUI screen, let's say this is my GUI screen and I want to show this button. So I need to use any of these three methods with this button in order to display it pack grid place. So there are three methods which can be used. We will be mostly using the place option with us. So let's see uh, how they can be used in pack method means if you want to place the things like if this is the screen, then pack method will try to pack the things in the center of the screen according to the custom size they have. Like it will try to feed all the things in the center. So in short, if I say a sort of a hack term, we can say horizontally, it will try to align uh, in the center. And in terms of the vertical alignment, it will try to align to the top by default, right? So it will pack the things in the center. Similarly, we have another option. The next one that we have is grid. So grid can actually be used for creating a matrix. Like let's say you create a matrix over the GUI screen and you selected that whether you want to show this here, out here or any of these position, right? So grid will be used as the number of uh, widgets you have accordingly, you can actually place it wherever you want. And the third one that we have is place. So place option is used like it will take two parameters generally. X and Y coordinates means over your screen where you want to place that particular element, right? So we'll be using this uh, method, but there is a one drawback with these, like depending upon the screen size and all this coordinates can change, right? Means uh, if I am using a 16 in screen for that, the X, Y coordinates may be different as compared to when we are talking about a short, uh, smaller size screen coordinates will remain same, but the placement of that will uh, change. Like let's say one screen is having 500 points and the another one is having 300 points. So if you are selecting the position 200 in this 500, it will be coming somewhat here, but in this case, it will be coming somewhat here. So depending upon the screen size, the location may change, right? So these are uh, the geometrical methods that can be used for <coughs> displaying all these. Let's move on to the next thing. Till now, is there anyone having any sort of a query they would like to ask?
that how uh, these things will work and all any query from anyone sides anyone having any query okay so if there are no queries then we may proceed ahead with the next part so let's create our ui screen now step by step i'll be uh, explaining you how we can do that particular part right so is my coding screen visible to everyone yeah okay great so guys in this first we are going to create the ui screen so for creating a ui screen what we need to do is first we will be importing the module first we are going to import the module so for importing the module from tkinter import star we will be importing the entire things of it and then we will be also importing a message box option so for the time being you may import it or not uh, because this will be used in a later part you can remove it from here if you want root equals to tk so this was our first step that was importing the uh, tk library this is our second step we are creating the ui screen so the moment you create an object for tk it will create a ui screen right so if you don't want to customize it it will create a by default screen for you like let me show you so here you can see this is a by default screen is the small box visible to everyone over which tk is written yes okay so this is a by default gui screen that can be created by using this code so this is our four step this is first step this is second and this is the fourth step as we are not creating any widgets we are not adding any element so there is no third step in this One, two, four. So, for creating any UI screen, this is the basic steps that you can add. Now, if you want to customize it, like let's say you want to increase the size of it or change the color of it, then you can customize it using some commands like configure, geometry, title. So, title can be used to uh, rename the title of it. Like here, you can see the title is TK. So, I will rename this. to digital dictionary then geometry means the size of this ui screen and configure bg equals to white smoke is basically the color that i would like to give to this background so you can select any color you want according to the sort of uh, what we can say a ui you want to create and this root dot resizable means we don't want to resize it so that's why we are writing it down out here means uh, we will block this now at the moment i am able to maximize it and uh, minimize it so i want to lock this option right so by using this much code i am customizing my screen now after that what i am doing is i am actually adding on a image to this file right so uh, the image that i will be using for my background part is something like this i'll be using this as my background image as you guys would have seen in a demo video also like where we were creating this so i'll be using this so there are different ways of adding on a image to your ui in tinkinter so this is one of the methods bg image equals to photo image file equals to bg2.png so this is a name of that file that uh, i already have out here bg2 right but make sure the file should be a png format file when you are using this method so in this we will be using a label in order to add on a image to our ui screen as i said that label can be used for display text or as well as for the image also so bg label equals to label now the first thing that we are going to pass in this is the ui screen so this is my ui screen that we have created so we are passing it here image equals to bg image so these are options for customizing it so image equals to background image 
and color i want for this uh, background is white smoke because i am using a transparent png image so that these books that are available out here like the objects that are available here you can see they may appear on one side and rest of the color will be the other part that is of the background then <clears throat> what i am doing in this case is i am creating a label okay uh, let's write it here only this part so let's create the customizable one first let's not go to the bottom let's run it here only so this is the code adding on the image to it that's it so if i run it so here you can see this ui screen this is our ui screen with a background so this is white smoke color digital dictionary is the heading and this image is available over it now right so we have created the background screen for our ui by doing this so over this we have used this image and this image is customizable in such a form like customized in such a format that it should fit this part right so this is through editing that i have done that this will be placed here this image size and all so you can use any other image also as uh, you want for your background now in this this is the place option you can see so bg label dot place x0 y0 so i have placed it to the 0 0 coordinate so according to the file uh, like according to the image size it has uh, created that particular part now after this what we are doing in this particular part is we are adding on a entry field to it this entry field will actually take a input from a user uh yes so my this uh, things will be like recording and all will be available over youtube and as well as i'll share the files of it code will not be shared but the supporting files will be there like these images and all you can download those things from there and you can uh, do the hands on things at your end after that so recording will be available over youtube also right after this webinar we will upload it to our youtube channel and you can get access to those things so coming back to it this is a second step adding on the entry to it so we are creating a entry field out here and now in this case what we need to do is just remember one thing that we are using one variable in this which is basically a variable class so in kinter it provides a special variable classes which can be used for creating an object which can be directly related with the widgets so like uh, for example let's say there is one variable a and there is uh, some widget out there so sometimes it might happen when i am changing the value of a there should be a effect over the widget and when i am having or making some changes over this widget it should ha have effect on the variable so to have uh, this sort of a thing we cannot use a normal variables directly so kinter allows us to have a special variables in this these are kinter uh, based things string var there are variables like int var we need to create a these are variable classes that are available int var string var so whenever you are supposed to associate a variable with the widget you can use these sort of a things where you are relating a variable with this widget so that whenever a changes are made to this widget it should reflect in this variable and whenever you make changes to this uh, variable that should get reflected to the widget right so we are creating a background till this point everything is same what we did in the previous code now next thing next step is we are creating a label which will uh, actually say that enter word because we want to create a entry field out there in which the user can input what word they want to search and these are all formatting options fg stands for foreground bg stands for background foreground means the text color and all so enter word label dot place so we created a label 
and we need to place it according to the screen size and all to make it display voice equals to string var so voice is a variable that i am creating and this variable will actually be linked with the entry field that i am having out here like if you see here text variable equals to voice so now whenever i will make some changes to this voice it will get reflected in the entry field and whenever there is a input that is being written in the entry field i can get it from this voice variable right so these uh, special variable classes available in kinter provide us some methods one is dot get so using dot get method i can read what is a value of this variable and dot set by using this i can actually set the value for this variable or object we can set right so entry so once we create the label like we have uh, asked the user enter word this is being written now after this in front of this we need a blank also so this blank uh, this blank space where user will enter till now we have done this now we need to create this also so how it can be created entry entry is the widget that we will call root font these are font styles you may write it or you may not write it it will use the by default one bg equals to white smoke because i want to blend it with the background text variable equals to voice and this ridge is basically the corners how the things will be done so all these things are basically aside from root and all these are in between options for customer whereas text variable is there to uh, assign the value and all then place again entry word entry config this config command is used to add on the configuration like uh, adjusting the border background and all that sort of a thing you can use with config command so config command can be used with all mostly widgets to configure the background and all like uh, the border width and all for that then focus dot set is the command which will basically add on a blinking cursor means it will uh, when i click over the ui screen it will add on the focus means you need to enter here root dot main loop so if i run this you can see this is how the things will look like now so now when i clicked over this screen you can see this uh, cursor out here right this cursor means that uh, it is a focus thing that i need to enter the things here so whatever i want i can write it here now right so our first part is done we created a background we entered this text enter word so this enter word is being written here text equals to enter word you can write down anything you want to here or you can change the placement also so as this is written in this purple color sort of a thing so the hex code for that is this right and here you can see uh, this border and all is being available over it and when it will be out of focus like if i read on this code so you will see this is in purple color right so this purple color is because of this highlight background and all any doubt till this point any question any query from anyone sides okay so let's move ahead now we will be adding on two more blocks meaning and synonym because as we are using a dictionary so we'll try to fetch a meaning of a word as well as the synonym of it so let me just showcase you what it is first means how it will look and then i will go through the code so at the moment this much we have done so this is the third cell and guys this will be a uh, like cumulative code whatever i will do the changes now that will be written after this point only right means it will be added to this code and i'll uh, means i'll showcase you where i have added on the new thing so once you are writing down this code you can always watch this video recording and then refer to the last of this video where i will show you the entire code once again so that you can write down the entire code in one go 
right so coming back to this point till this point everything uh, like let me showcase you uh, what it will look like first so it will be looking like this now means we have added on these two things now in this code we are adding these two blocks so let's see how we did it right so how we have done is like all this code will remain same till this point everything is same whatever was written uh, before this so for adding meaning section now we are actually using a uh, another widget which is known as text text is another widget which is used generally for uh, writing down the multiple lines and all sort of a text if you want to do so for that first we will create a label this label will be a normal text in which we will write down meaning right we will write down meaning so how to write down this meaning meaning label label root text equals to meaning font and all just for the blending purpose place 75 y is 130 now in front of this i am creating a text widget text area equals to text and you may notice in each and every widget the first value that you will pass is or the parameter you, that you will be passing is the gui screen over which you want to reflect those things right so you need to uh, write down that particular part over that uh, point of view right so after this we are creating a synonym part so for creating a synonym part like we will be creating a synonym label like here you can see synonym section label text equals to synonyms font all this setting and here you can see synonym is equals to text root then the height and width basically how much space i want for it bd relief equals to rich wrap equals to word that we want to wrap it inside the things uh, out there bg white smoke so this bd is basically the <clears throat> border dimension and all that i want for it synonym config and all this will be done so by doing this much of code we will be creating this sort of a ui so in this you may notice whatever field i am focusing over it is turning a bit gray and rest of them are coming back to the original colors right so our most of the outlook of this ui is ready now the next step we are going to do is we will be adding on some buttons to it means if i am writing down some text here let's say sky so how to give a command to it that you need to search this so how to do that particular part for that we need some action items or some sort of a triggering factors so we will be adding some buttons we'll add some buttons out here like one will be clear so that whatever i have written that might get clear and one will be exit so when you click over this the app should exit and after that we will be adding on some buttons here like voice <clears throat> search by voice means whatever you say that will be searched and on the right side a normal search button if a text is written and here we will add on a speaker option means if you want to hear what sort of a things are being written then you can use this speaker option so we'll be adding on these five buttons one by one first we will add these two then we will add these two right and in this we will see one by one how we can do that particular part so till this point anyone having any query they can ask in if anyone is having any query out there okay let's move ahead then so now as we are using buttons we need to have some functions related to it means on clicking that what should happen 
like let me show you uh, how it will work first on clicking it let's say i write sky so on clicking this clear button it will clear the context whatever is written in these blocks and when i click on this exit it will ask me if i want to exit this or not if yes it will exit the app right so these are the features we are adding now so how we will be doing it we will be creating two functions one is for clear another one is for exiting so for clear this is a code def clear text area dot config state equals to normal we are bringing it to a normal state text area dot delete this takes two values index starting and ending so from the starting you want to make it to ending you want to clear the entire text area means whatever was being a uh, word meaning that you have got you want to clear that space and then after that you want to disable that particular area entry word entry dot delete this is for where uh, you are writing these are three blocks right the bigger one so this text area is this the synonym is this third one and this entry deletion is this one so in all them delete command will be used for clearing the text which is written out there so on clearing it this is how we can clear it the next thing that we have is the exit command so for exiting it we are using a message box so like when i am clicking over it and on using exit this is a message box this is a, another widget that we can use in kinter through which we can ask in the user whether they want to quit the app or not so this feature can be added on using this particular part from kinter import message box you need to import this first and after that you will be using dot ask yes no option from it so res equals to message box dot ask yes no these are the met uh, options that you want to write over it confirm do you want to exit this is just a text that will be written over it like when you click over it confirm do you want to exit so this is a text that you want to write over it and after that if res is true means if you click over yes root dot destroy root dot destroy dot destroy is the command to destroy the gui else pass means if you click on no then nothing will happen so this is for exiting if you want to create a exit option in any of your ui screen you can do it like this then rest of the code will remain same we uh, whatever we have written above now here the code will change again we will add on buttons in ui first we have written the operation now we will add on the button to it so for doing that clear button equals to button first thing is ui screen text equals to clear means what you want to write over that button bg equals to black active background white smoke means currently it will when you click over it it will turn to white smoke color cursor hand cursor will change to hand to is a type of it you may write it or you may not write it it's customizing thing if you just want to make a simple ui you can remove these commands but this is the main thing that you need to write command equals to clear and always remember in kinter whenever we are linking a function with a button we are not going to call it remember this thing if your function is not accepting any value like in this case this clear and exit these are not accepting any values or any sort of arguments so we can directly link him it by writing down like this command equals to clear and notice here we are just writing down the clear out here we are creating another object of it we are not calling it i am not writing it like this clear i am not doing this because if you do this while compiling the code it will automatically execute this function and it will lead to the execution of whatever this function is doing so you are supposed to write just the function name if your function is not accepting any value let's say if your function is accepting some values then there you have to use lambda function and wrap it 
if your function is accepting value you cannot directly link it like this to it right so command equals to clear and similarly the configuration for it width and all clear button dot place and then adding on the exit button so these two codes are similar to each other just that the name and all is different right so by doing this it will add on the buttons and it will look something like this right any doubt till this point to anyone anyone having any query till this point is guys anyone having any query till this point okay let's move ahead now we are going to add on the normal search and search by voice button to it so we will be adding two new buttons to it so search by voice is an option which will be requiring two process uh, like one process search by voice will require that is speech to text so in this uh, webinar i will be telling you the implementation of it if you guys want to understand it in more deep then you can refer to our past webinar recordings we had a complete webinar over this uh, voice assistant based thing in which i have explained these things in a bit detailed manner that how you can uh, use these libraries and all in this code i'll be giving you a reference how it can be used as a application part right so in this we are using two parts one is import speech recognition as sr this is an external module and before this pyttsx3 so pyttsx3 is text to speech module and this speech recognition is your <clears throat> speech to text right these two things are there these are external modules you can download it using pip command so if you want to read about them you can read it from uh, this p documentation of it official uh, like from here pypi part that how to use this and all or you can refer to our previous uh, webinar recording of uh, voice assistant in which i have explained the entire thing how you can operate it and all right so importing these libraries and then we are setting up this engine out here this import time library is used to add on a delay for it means when we will be uh using the command of word meaning and all at that time we need some delay in between so for that we are using time these commands are used for initializing this pyttsx3 engine so engine equals to we are going to initialize it get properties voices set property voice now here you need to make changes for your uh, uh, pc like i have some custom voices so i am writing 3 here but for you it will work for 0 and 1 for your case it will work 0 and 1 either a male or a female voice will be there i have added on custom voices for this context so that's why this index is different for you it will be 0 or 1 and then uh, setting up the speed of this so this is initializing of it and after that i am creating a function def speak which can take a text and engine dot say dot say is a command which is used for converting a text to speech so this is a offline module you can use the say command to convert any text to speech it could be a paragraph also and then run and wait so this is a speak function then we are also creating one function speak meaning so this speak meaning what this function is actually doing it is checking if the length inside the text area dot get so this text area dot get means like if i run it here you can see something will be written here when i'll get the answer right so what i am doing out here is 
i am checking the length of this text if this the length of this text is there that means some meaning i have got out there right if not then there is no meaning so to hear it i am putting just a sort of a check out there if there is any meaning or not for that i am checking the length of it you can use any other method also for doing that so if the length of the dot get part like here dot get one to end means the entire text if the length of that is more than two then we will speak meaning of the word is and speak text area dot get means whatever is written inside that it will speak that and after that i am adding a delay if the length of synonym is more than that then it will speak synonym also because when we are using the dictionary api we will be using a oxford api in that some words will have some meaning and some will have on word meaning plus synonyms not for not all the words synonyms are being mentioned so that's why we have put this sort of a check so this these two are for speaking the meaning of it now after that is search by voice option so search by voice is so that whatever i speak it will take that as input so speak duration equals to int to r equals to sr dot recognizer so i am using the record function in this so it will uh, listen to me for 2 seconds and take the input from me with sr dot microphone as source i am using the microphone of my laptop as a source audio r dot record source and duration you can adjust the duration according to you or you can also use r dot listen command here if you want try we are trying to recognize it convert it into text and here after converting it what i am doing is voice dot set text so voice is a variable which i have actually linked in with that blank space where the user will enter the search right and rest of the part remains the same after this code this clear function same exit same and rest going same at the end now we will add on these buttons so search by voice button now as we are using a image button in this so we need to add on a image using this method mic image photo mic dot png so i have resized these images for this ui purpose only mic button button image equals to mic image this is the only difference between exit and this images button in order of creation command equals to search by voice so when i will click on this it will call search by voice function that is this part and after that at the end is basically your audio button means if you click over that it will speak it so if i run it now whatever i will speak it will take it as input please speak sky so i have said sky so it has taken that part now clear if i use another thing please speak question incorrect input please so, try again this is how it will work it will take the input if not it will say incorrect input if i try it again please speak morning like that right so when it will detect it will write it else it will say incorrect input now after this we are going to use the oxford api out here for fetching the word meaning so what we are going to do is we will be using this api we will be making a request using the request module so let me show you uh, what this is first this is the dictionary uh, like this is the website that you can access so this is uh, oxford dictionaries api that we can use for our project purpose it can be available for free like uh, there are different plans for it if you go to the documentation get started there are different plans according to your requirement you can do it they will provide you free like you can make 1000 uh, to 10000 i guess uh, exact number not 
I need to check for it. You can make up to that much request per month free of cost. Right. So what you need to, all you need to do is you need to create an ID over this uh, website and you will be having your own API that you can call. So I'll sign in. I have already created account. You guys can create account. It, they will give you one form that you need to fill. They'll not ask for any sort of uh, credit card or anything. They will just simply ask normal details and create the ID after that login and click on this API credentials and it will give you the API credentials. So for using most of the external APIs, we need the API ID and the application key. So this application key is generally a security key, which is linking this with my ID. So <clears throat> I'll be using this. How to use it? Basically the sample code is written here. If you go to documentation, get started, this is a sample code written. So you can uh, try this. I'll show you a demo of this import request, import JSON. So this will return us data in JSON format. So the data is generally available in JSON format over the internet because it is lightweight. And <clears throat> in this, uh, we can easily take the things from like JavaScript object notations is the what it stands for and we can easily uh, transfer this data so this is app uh, application id means a sort of a user id and this is a sort of a password for me language equals to engb word id means what word meaning you want to search so url equals to this is a url given over it if you see this is a url and after that, what we need to do is we need to add on the language and word ID dot lower means whatever I'm writing the word here, it will convert it into lower text request dot get is the command, which will call this API, which will make a request in this. We need to pass this URL. Whenever we use request command, we need to pass on the URL to which website we want to make the request or to which API we want to make the request. After that, it takes the credential for that. Like what is your ID and uh, the <clears throat> application key so that you can access your account from it. R dot text. So if I run it, you can see it has returned me the data searched in for the word smoke. So this sort of a data it will return. So in this we need to extract out the useful for information for us. So this is a complete JSON data that we got. You can search in for any word instead of smoke. You may write anything. Morning. So here you can see morning operation. So this is a meta information and here you can see the meanings. <clears throat> so in this ID language, lexical entries and in entries, you have the meaning for it like senses, this is the definition. So JSON data, you must practice how you can read the files from it. It, it is a sort of a nested data in which uh, list and dictionary sort of a things are available in the JSON format. Basically it's a JSON string. You can call it and you need to move one by one step inside this. Like you need to move one by one bracket inside this in order to read it. So in order to read this information, there is a sample code that we have written, like making a request. And after that, to access the word meaning, this is how we are entering inside this. So we need to make use of keys and the indexing in order to extract the, there is a definition key used in this, which basically means what is the meaning of that word. Like here, the period of the time between midnight and noon, this is a meaning of morning, especially from sunrise to this. And after that synonyms word, if it is written in this synonyms, then it will show it. If not, then there will be no, uh, like here you can see text synonyms is read. So <clears throat> if I run it, then uh, you can see how it will work. This is the code for extracting the information. So this is a word meaning and this is the synonyms for it, right? 
So this is how you can use the external API of this Oxford dictionary for fetching any information like r.txt, it is returning us the data in R format and it is in JSON format. So we are going to use JSON.loads option in order to convert it into Python based data from JSON uh, format. So after this, it can becomes a Python object and this is how we are extracting the useful information from this. You can extract on like there are meanings and a lot of things which are there in this sort of data. You can use any according to your requirement. Now, this is how we can do this. Now, the last part of this is basically to add on this feature over our GUI. So for that, we will be having the same libraries, same code here, same speak function, same speak meaning function, same search by voice function. The new function that we are going to add on to it is search function because this is the only thing that is being left there. So for this also, the code will almost remain the same. This is the thing that we are doing in here. Def search answer is a variable that we are creating word equals to entry word dot get. So whatever thing that I will write in that input will be taken, uh, will be read from it. Entry word dot entry dot get means whatever I'm writing in there that will get stored into word. If not word pass means if there is no word written out, then I will pass it else. I'll make a call through this API code, same uh, API ID key. So in this, you can write down your API key and ID that you will get for your personal account, right? Because it will not work for you. So you need to provide it to your personal uh, authority there, your personal app ID and app key you will get after uh, login to that platform. Then URL will remain same for you also, but here the things will be, be different reading it. And after that, what I am doing is the same thing means uh, if the length of the data is less than two, that what I am doing, I am printing incorrect input means if it has not uh, written anything out there or there is an error in finding the meaning for that, it will say that you have given an incorrect input. Else code for meaning the same sort of a text. Val data results. So we are in moving into that value dot keys to get the meaning of it means if definition in val keys means if there is a meaning of that word available in that. So these words will change according to the API you are using in this, the data was available like this. So these were the keys that were available in that. And this is a way for uh, collecting all the synonyms as there are multiple synonyms in this. So we are collecting all of them together else answer will be, there will be no answer. And after that, text area config normal writing down the meaning in the text area and writing down the synonym uh, in the text area. So insert command is used to add on the meaning for that. So this is the main function that is doing the searching operation. Right. So I'll again give you a look over this answer is a variable that we are creating for storing synonyms. This is to get the word from the user. If there is no word, nothing will happen. If there is a word, then it will basically uh, like <clears throat> make a request using that word. Like here you can see word dot lower. I'm adding on a word to it. And if the length of the data, the data that you have received from the API is less than two means there is an error in that else extracting out the information and filling it to the text. After this, the entire code will remain same. The only difference in this now will be appearing is the last search by voice button. So <clears throat> sorry, the search button. And in this case, we are just calling in the search option. This is the only difference. And one more difference in this, that is when you have created the search by voice button. Now, as we see over Google, like if I move to Google, 
then if i click over this it automatically gives you a result right i don't need to click over the search or press enter once i click over search by voice option it automatically does that so to bring in that feature we have actually called two functions at same time so in kinter you can link two functions to a single button by passing them inside a lambda in the form of a list so i am calling search voice and search both the functions at same time so that it automatically takes the input and search it from the api so this is the main difference from the previous code and this one search button so now if i run it so now if i write down sky and click on this so you can see it gave me the meaning and it gave me the synonyms of it and if i play click over this it will read the text which is written meaning of this word is the region of the atmosphere and outer space seen from the earth <clears throat> synonyms of this word are the atmosphere the stratosphere the skies airspace right was that audible to you yes sir right so this is how yes, it sir. can be this is how it can be done now let's see the search by voice option if i click over this please speak question incorrect input please try again okay let's try it once again or oh, let me clear it a bit please speak question a sentence worded or expressed so as to elicit information inquiry or query is the synonyms so if i play over it meaning of this word is a sentence worded or expressed so as to elicit information synonyms of this word are inquiry query right so that is how it works now you guys notice i just clicked over the search by voice option and it automatically searched it right so that was the reason i have written two functions together so that is how this entire project can work now you can make the changes to this ui according to you you want and whatever sort of a ui you want to make from it you can easily do that part right so let me just give you a view of this code once again that how it is working i am just showing this last code importing all the files these are the headers required for it and out of this these are the external modules these two you need to download it using pip install command like this pip install pytdsx3 similarly pip install speech recognition for that then setting up this voice engine creating a speak function and after that creating a speak meaning function so that whatever text is written i can do that now why i have created this lock over it like if i clear it if i click on this so you can see it is not working right that's why i have made this check out there if the check is not there it will still read meaning of this word every time whenever i will click on this speak option so this check is making it working properly to check the length of the data that if there is any text written in it like uh, if there is any text written in this text then only it will read it or if there is any text written in synonyms then only it will read it right so this is speak meaning and after that search by voice so the search by voice code remain the same as the previous one initializing it and setting it to this means whatever was recognized you are uh, uh, writing down it in the space then def clear for clearing the field then def exit for exiting the code means program if you want and after that the main function that is def search for writing down the synonyms and the meaning in that so making a api request loading the data json dot loads are and after that checking if there is any error or not because what will happen if there is any error let me show you 
let me uh, showcase you uh, how an error will occur in this right let me uh, run this and let's uh, write down anything else right i am writing this incorrect input so <clears throat> this is how it shows incorrect input now in this uh, i have put this sort of a checking that when the data is less than this it will put, uh, write down incorrect input because the data it will return is there will be something like this error will be written and after that uh, some reason will be written right so in this only one element will be there in the json data that's why length will be less than 2 else there will be lot of data available in it and length of that data will remain more than that and after that if there is uh, no error then it will extract out the useful meaning from it and this is how it will extract it right means uh, nesting into that data one by one steps and then else answer and filling that in the text area that are available and after that you can write down the code for your ui creating the ui screen adding the background image background uh, color to synchronize labels creating the label uh, variable and entry field after that you can create the meaning section text area then synonym section and synonym area then clearing clear button so that you can clear the screen and exit button in all of them you can see we are not calling the functions we are just writing the name search by voice now here you can see i am calling these functions because they are wrapped inside lambda so whenever you are wrapping it inside lambda then you will call it else you will just write down the function name and after that audio in this speak meaning function and search button we are calling the search function only so here we are not calling it but here we are calling it because we want to get it executed automatically on clicking it because this is because lambda is there so on compilation a lambda object will be created and once you click on this command then only this function will call else what it will do if you directly call it here then while compiling it only it will execute this function right so this is how you can create a ui is there any query anything you guys want to ask or any question from your side because with this it completes the thing that was the aim of uh, this particular webinar so i would like to welcome the things like if there are any queries or any question from your side um, available for the answers yes guys is there any query anything you want to ask any one of you having any queries okay so if there are no queries <clears throat> so that's all for this session from my side those who want to uh, like learn more about these sort of a things or they want to learn about any particular domain they can visit our website hexinbit.com and over that you guys can enroll in for different uh, courses from different domains you want to upskill uh, in particular domain so we have professional programs internship programs self learning internship in which you will be getting a uh, mentor based sessions and all self learning is something in which a recorded content will be there there will be no live sessions and all plus those who are new to python they want to learn python they can also go through this free course if they want so these are category like web development electronics based iot aiml all uh, most of the current scenario based things uh, we have the courses available top notch uh, industry skills requirement at the moment so if you are looking in for upskilling yourself you can go to our website you can enroll in for these courses that too at a reasonable price with a quality content that is available right so you can uh, go through our website in case if you want to uh, enroll in for a particular course to upskill yourself right
so with this uh, it completes the part from my side regarding uh, whatever things were supposed to be uh, covered up so again before closing i would again like to ask if anyone is having any sort of queries there are any queries you can write it down in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask your queries if there are any queries out there okay guys so if there are no queries uh, okay i am glad aditya and abhit you guys uh, like the session so thanks for the appreciation guys this uh, video recording will be available over youtube you can always refer back to it if you want to create this project or any sort of a similar based application creating a different ui and all and after this uh, as we close in uh, soon you will be getting one feedback form do fill that form so that uh, we can get a feedback regarding the services and the webinar and you can also write down what would be the new things that you would like to listen from our side in the upcoming sessions and we'll surely bring those topics in our upcoming free webinar series right so with this i'd like to sign off now so thank you everyone for joining in and i hope you have enjoyed this session and you got to learn something new and this could be uh, something fruitful that you can make out of it right bye bye okay. take care everyone and keep on learning stay safe bye bye take care everyone thank you sir